Hello everyone, this is Professor Nchi Kun from Unimas. In this video, I'm going to give you a lecture on pre-stressed concrete technology, which is lecture number three on structural application. So the first application for pre-stressed concrete is of uh, bridge construction. Eh? Okay, so for bridges, we have uh, very long span girdles. Okay, so these girdles are made of uh, pre-stressed concrete components. Eh? Okay, so these are pre-stressed concrete structures with pre-stressing tendons inside the uh, girdle. Okay, so the next one is a construction of a segmental girder bridge okay so each of these segments are cast individually and then lifted onto the construction frame here and then they will be installed one segment by one segment so this type of construction we call it the balance can deliver okay so each side of the bridge construction has to be balanced to the other side eh? okay so uh, meaning that if you add on one section on this side then you must add on another section on this side and then all these segments are held together by using pre-stressing tendon eh? or pre-stressing steel for each uh, segments to be connected together so this shows the segments of the segmental construction eh? okay so this is a box section box section meaning that the inside of the cross section is hollow eh? okay so this is considered a hollow box section and uh, in the picture here you can see the holes on the diaphragms here okay so these holes are uh, made for the pre-stressing tendon to pass through okay so these are the holes for the pre-stressing tendon to pass through and inside the box girdle here then we have diaphragms okay like what we have seen here we have diaphragms here so find the holes made for the pre-stressing tendon to pass through eh? these are also pre-stressing tendon so these pre-stressing tendons are considered external tendons eh? okay because they are not connected to the concrete at all except at the location of the diaphragms where they pass through the diaphragms okay so this is considered external pre-stressing eh? Okay, so this shows the reinforcement of the hollow box uh, section during construction. So these are the anchorage uh, part of the pre-stressing system. Eh? So each of these girders has this because each girder will have to be connected to the next girder. So the pre-stressing tender will have to pass through two segments and then hold the two segments together. And then this segment will be connected to the previous segment okay, by another set of pre-stressing tendons. Eh? Okay, so this shows how this uh, segmental girdle construction is uh, placed into the formwork. Eh? Okay, so these are the reinforcement cage. Okay, and then these are the formwork. And after the formwork is done, then concrete casting will take place and the finished segments will look like this so each of these segments will be lifted onto the construction site to be installed okay segment by segment so that's why this type of construction is called segmental construction okay so normally it involves a hollow box sections like this and each section they will have diaphragms like this in order to hold the pre-stressing steel 
Okay, so this is the finish uh, bridge okay, of that segmental box girder. Okay, so this is actually the second link of the Malaysia to Singapore highway. Eh? So this is the second link. Okay, so during the construction, I was there to witness uh, how the construction is done. Okay, so this is the cast in situ part of the bridge during the construction of the approach of the bridge. Eh? Okay, so when the bridge is starting to be built on the ground and be is uh, spanning across the river. So this is the part that is on the ground. Eh? Okay, this is uh, somewhere near the abutment. Okay, so this is cast in situ. Okay, and then it will be connected to the segments eh, later on when it's approaching the span. Okay, so that is the construction of uh, bridges. Eh? Okay, so the next application of pre-stressed concrete is in uh, building construction. So the usage of uh, pre-stressed concrete technology in building construction is mostly for precast concrete construction. Eh? Okay, so meaning that all the beam, column, and slab systems are all precast, right? So this picture shows how each uh, precast segments are being installed. Okay, so we have the column seg segments with the corbel okay, to uh, support the beams. Huh? Okay, so these are the beams on the upper floor. And then once the beams are in place, this slab component will be placed. Okay, spanning between the two beams all right so this uh, component here is a double t section eh? okay so double t section is a very effective section for the floor construction okay or slab construction eh? okay so this is the schematic diagram showing how each components are being installed together so we have the column the beam and the slabs right so this beam is a l section okay where the recess here is to support the the end of the slab component here okay where this uh, beam segment is just a rectangular section because it does not need to provide any part to support the slab okay so only this beam we have to support the slab so this lab becomes a one-way slab huh? okay so in precast uh, construction most of the slabs are one-way slab so meaning that only one set of the beam or the beam running in one direction is supporting the slab so the uh, support of these slabs here are these beams running in this direction okay so this beam here and this beam here they support no load except for the self weight of the beam okay so this is another schematic diagram to show a more complicated layout of uh, slabs and beam and column okay so it doesn't mean that precast construction is only for square uh, floor plan, eh? square or rectangular floor plan. Eh? It can be used for uh, complicated shapes like this. So this is considered an octagonal shape. Okay. So in this case, you need to modify some of the slab segments. Eh? Okay. So in order to create this kind of uh, com complicated floor plan. And then this is another picture showing the construction of uh, precast components. Okay, so these are the floor slabs. But this floor slabs is not a double T section. This floor slab is a holoco slab. 
So hollow core meaning that the slab will have a hollow round uh, section, uh, round segments. Uh, okay, so we have a hollow pipe. Okay, so in over here for each slab, you have a few hollow uh, pipes. Uh, okay, going through the slab. So the hollow here is used to uh, reduce the weight of the slab. Uh, okay. So we just uh, take away the concrete that is uh, not needed to withstand the stress and then it will reduce the weight of the slab. So hollow coal slab is also a very popular slab section that we use. Uh. Okay. And then this is another picture showing the building construction with uh, column and uh, beam frames and then the slabs is uh, this is a triple T section okay so this will will uh, be built as the slab for this building okay and then this is sh uh, showing how the hollow core slab is being uh, produced Okay, so you see the hollow uh, pipes here. Okay, and then you have see the pre-stressing steel here. So hollow core slab and also double T sec sections and also uh, triple T sections. They are all pre-tension uh, segments. Huh? Okay, so meaning that this steel is already being stressed. Okay before concreting so this is showing the concreting process so this steel is already tensioned so this is a pre-tension uh, operation okay so the steel is already tensioned before the casting so once the concrete is cast and hardened then the steel tension will be transferred onto the concrete segments as a compressive fall onto the concrete section okay so pre-stretching operations in fact we have already uh, learned in the previous lecture but let us repeat uh, how the uh, pre-stretching operations is done so we use uh, pre-stretching jacks and then this is a multiple uh, strains jack uh, okay so we have uh, mostly using seven wire strains and then we have multiple strains here and this jack is uh, placed against the anchorage here and then the steel will be tensioned and then it will be locked at the anchorage okay once the re desired precessing force is achieved uh, Okay, and then this jack will be removed. Okay, so this is showing how the anchorage is, uh, how the anchorage looks like. Huh? Okay, when the uh, pre-stressing operation is going to be done or it has been done. Okay, so this shows the anchorage, the wedge and grip action anchorage huh? for each of the seven wire tendon okay so that's all for the lecture on the pre-stress concrete technology and please take note that there is a mini project that you need to submit eh? okay so i'll put the details of the mini project on the elip okay so please check your elip from time to time and then uh, make sure that you download the specification for your mini project and then you need to submit your mini project on or before the deadline that is uh, stated in the mini project specification eh? so the mini project is basically a project that you need to choose a type of uh, pre-stressed concrete structures and then describe 
on the construction process and then describe the pros and cons of the project that you have chosen so I have already uh, I also put up a sample paper okay describing every uh, some types of the pre-stressed concrete structures and describing the uh, advantages and disadvantages of that type of structures so please read this uh, paper and then try to write your report uh, on your mini project following the paper that I have uh, put up on ELIP uh. So thank you very much for uh, staying with me until the end of this lecture. So I'll see you again uh, after the MCO. Okay, we don't know when the MCO is going to be over. So let's hope for the best. Thank you very much and see you again.